<laughs> All right. First question comes from, oh shit, no. First question is actually from Twitter. This one comes from Middle Age Stream. Is there a certain ritual you have when you are in creative mode? For example, I listen to classical music when I'm messing with overlays off stream. Um, yeah, so, so precursor, I do a lot of uh, Twitch designs. I do a lot of content development. I do a lot of animation, a lot of stuff like that, just for people that don't know. But, um, I, I, I actually saw that question and it's good because it's the first thing that I had to prepare for today. So I still don't have an answer, but my, my answer is I've probably prepared more for this podcast than I have for any project I've ever done in my life when it comes to work. Stop. Uh, it, I, honestly, I swear, I swear. Uh, my creative process, typically when I'm, when I'm getting work done, I'm, I love listening to music. I, lo I watch a lot of streams on Twitch. Um, I think the streams in general are too interactive for me or I like being too interactive. Uh, so I, I find that I take a lot of weight away from actually getting the work done. Uh, audio books are fantastic. I, I tend to listen to those whenever I can. Um, now with Casey, we're in discord or something while we're both working. Um, but my creative process typically, uh, starts with me getting a project, uh, working on something that, you know, that, uh, you know, finding the things that I find inspiring, whether that be the, just it's simple, uh, images or something like uh, tangible textures or something like that. And then kind of just running with it and listening to music and, uh, going with it. But, but that being said, that's the, the right answer. But in, in general, typically my creative process of waiting to the last second and then while well, fire alarms are going off, I'm just getting everything done. So that's typically what it looks like. I have found that when it comes to working on stuff off stream, that a lot of the things that you are doing involve video and audio and so i'll i'll load up itunes i'll start a playlist i'll get about two songs in and then i have to pause it to listen to a sound effect that i want to implement yeah. to watch a video so i pause the music and then i eventually just going hours with just silence and then just listen to the things that i'm working on um i can't there, there's no point in me trying to watch something while I'm trying to work. I find it completely distracting and it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. But I will assume that this question was directed at you, Mr. Creative, and, and not me. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm right there with you. Like, I, there's a lot of stuff that I enjoy doing, like watching Twitch and, and watching Netflix and stuff like that. But I think when I actually get a lot of work done, it's usually when I'm listening to music or an audiobook or something that I can kind of just space out on. Uh, cause Casey brought it to my attention. She's like, Hey, you didn't get, you know, you didn't get the, I brought it up to her that I didn't really get what I needed to get done, done. She's like, what did you do today? I was like, well, I was on Twitch and blah, blah, blah. And then she kind of witnessed, she, she did me the favor of witnessing kind of what I was doing and what my ritual was. And I, first thing I do is sit down on my second screen, pull up Twitch and I'd be sitting and I'd have my application open, but nothing would get done on my application because as soon as I went into stream, I'd be talking to people. And like yep. we were talking about it earlier when, when I go into chat, someone's like, Oh, what happened? What so I'm just typing and like. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of that happening and then it, it kind of like draws me my attention because i am like as you anyone that's listening to this podcast podcast is probably like oh my god this guy's the most add person of all time but uh, i have the hardest time focusing on something and then if i get distracted it's impossible to return to it so like i can't get back into it um especially in like the beginning phases of a project it's so so hard for me mm -hmm. to just get the ball rolling a lot of the time, like I'll tinker with something back and forth and eh, I don't like that. I don't like that. I spend like half of my time just trying to get something to work in a way that I like it. And then all of a sudden, you know, the last few hours, I do like 90% of the work. So, Okay. That's how I work. It's a good routine. That's great. It's great. I'm going to write a book. Next question from Gigantic Gent on Twitter. Do you ever regret combining? He said combing, but I'm guessing... Or, yeah, I copy-pasted this. I think it said combing. Uh, do you ever regret combining all your lovers together? <laughs> lovers. <laughs> do you ever <laughs> regret combining all of your loves together on Twitch, meaning camera, graphics, audio? Does it cause an unnecessary attention, or do you welcome it? Um. Okay, so two-part question. The I I do regret it, 100% because it overcomplicates everything that I have to do to the day to day. I find that there's little projects like it, uh, now, cause have you ever seen my intro that I have? Oh yeah. The fully animated. So that, that intro, not the one with my face, but the one with the, the broken down machine. Yep. That intro I did while I was supposed to be doing another project. And I really, 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 so like I'll, I'll have a work project that's going to keep me alive. Right. It's going to feed me. 
And then there's some project on Twitch that I can do that I can like takes me just as much time, but I want to do it because like, it's something that I'm really, really passionate about where like creating corporate videos, like to some extent, aren't really the thing that I'm super passionate about in that moment. So I have to get through doing the thing that I want to do a lot of the time. So it's like, it's, I'm spending the time that I should be spending working, making and building stuff that creates, you know, value or builds value or what I believe to be value on my Twitch channel. So there's a lot of overlap that it's really hard for me to kind of decide which one is work and which one is just me making stuff for the channel. Um, But yeah, it's super hard to juggle. It's something that I'm, I'm not very good at at all, but something that I'm trying to figure out now, you know, more so, but you know, one simple uh, example of that is like on Twitch, you want everything set up and to be as simple as possible. So you can turn key, you can sit down, turn it on and the stream turns on and everything's, you know, everything's perfect. And you're, you're able to do your own thing. And whenever you have technical issues, it completely derails everything. It happens all the time. My camera that I'm using, I use it for work too. So I have to disassemble it, take it down, and then I have to put it back uh, up. And that that happens. It's not, it's not, it doesn't happen all the time, but it's, you know, it's pretty rare, but it tends to happen. So it's like, you know, breaking down and setting up and that overlap with hardware based stuff is it can be a massive pain in the ass. Cause in general on Twitch, you just want everything set up and and to be working. So yep. I tend to to have that issue quite a bit. Oh, what was the end of the question that Jen wrote? I fucking closed the script on accident. Son of a bitch. What are you God doing to me? Yeah, what uh, is this? <laughs> does it cause any unnecessary attention or do you welcome it? Was the second part. Uh, okay. So yeah. So the, the second part, like a lot of people, when I first started streaming, people would come in and be like, oh my God, look at the quality of this channel. Like, uh, how are you only at like 10 viewers? How are you only at five viewers? Whatever the question was like, wow, this is insane. Like, uh, you know, a lot of people come in because of the quality that, that, because I, like we talked about it earlier, I, I have a background in doing this stuff in the real world, like setting up productions, working, you know, big, these big events for companies like Red Bull, like doing Red Bull Aces, which is this big wingsuit racing competition that I learn these little, you know, traits and tasks, uh, you know, every time that I go out and work and I can apply those pretty easily because I know how to do them. It's just simple stuff like masking lights that people don't think of. So like if you have RGB lights in your background, and you mask the light off, then the light that's lighting your face doesn't protrude to the background and it doesn't wash out that light. There's little stuff like that that I can combine. It's super simple, um, but I welcome the the idea that a lot of people come into my stream to ask me about that stuff because I am really passionate um, in you know, what my viewers probably know because as soon as this you know anyone asks me about stuff, whether it be cameras or whatever it is, I go on in like a, f- a three hour tangent talking about it. So. Same. Completely derailing the game. I do it constantly. Yeah. It constantly. Anytime somebody brings up like tech and we just start going, oh, oh like I, we were playing God of War the other day and yeah. I can't remember what somebody asked me about audio or, or computers or something. And then it was just, I couldn't stop talking. I'm just sitting there and then it gets to the point where you set the controller down and you're looking at the camera and you're talking. You're like, fuck, I need to get back to the goddamn video yeah, game. God damn it. Yeah. And then you feel bad because you're like, okay, what am I supposed to be doing in the game? And you feel, yeah, I, it, it's, it's hard to, for me, I welcome that because I, I really, I genuinely enjoy helping people with their setups because there's a lot of que- th- this information, a lot of the time for Twitch in general, uh, of how to set something up properly is just not available out there. Like the, nope. the, there's a lot of information kind of floating around, but a lot of streamers keep it close to their vest because you know, they don't want other people to know how they do that. I hate that shit. I hate that. It drives me crazy. One time I asked this guy about a, uh, about a, a motorized dolly and I was like, Hey, that's really cool. You know, I work in the broadcast industry. Like, which one are you using? Cause I know names of like a hundred of these things messages me back. He's like, Hey, it's not you, but you know, I don't want to reveal that because people steal my ideas. And I'm like, okay. That streamer's name start with an A. Yes. I know. It's probably an automated, automated response, but yeah, I was like, Hey, that's really cool, man. Cool. And, uh, I actually finally recently found out what it was because he made a, a series of whatever of YouTube videos, but it wasn't I don't, even the one that, that I was thinking about buying. So I was like, hey, I could have gotten the better one. And then I, I don't want to generalize an opinion about that person. But in yeah. general, in my opinion, when you yeah. have people that gatekeep stuff like that, yeah. it means that that is the only value that they see in themselves. And once that gets out, they think like, oh, well, shit, people aren't going to walk or yeah. aren't going to watch they- anymore. And to be completely fair, I've, I've been there too. Like I I've been to the point where I'm like, ah, you know, this is the thing that I'm kind of standing up on these different, you know, intros and transitions. And everyone's like, wow, I really want your transition. How do I get one of those? 
and I've been terrible. Like people already know that I've been, you know, an asshole about, you know, responding to people like maybe not an asshole, but like, I just don't like, I don't take time to respond to everyone on Twitter on, on, uh, there's just so many people. Like if I post uh, an overlay or transition on Twitter, I'll get like 20, 30, uh, DMS asking how much it is. And a lot of time, you know, people are off put by the cost because like, this is what it takes for me to do this. I'm just yeah. not charging myself anything. So I, I understand it. I get it, but I, I a hundred percent agree with you. It's like, I think in general, the, my prognosis of, of Twitch in general is that I have more potential growing on Twitch, helping other people grow than I do just trying to grow myself. Right. Right. Because I think that there's a lot of people, a majority of the people that watch my stream and I, maybe you, uh, share this, uh, maybe not, but a lot of the people that watch mine or a majority want to be streamers as well. So mm -hmm. anything that I can do to help them do that helps them grow. Right. So, you know, and I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that's going to be like, Hey, well, let's all get together and go together. Cause it's right. just, you know, that's not how people think, but like I want to help other people to grow to see them successful. Yeah, it's like we're all looping our arms together and, and frolicking through dandelions <laughs> and living in the clouds. But at the end of the day, like I, I just want to be able to help people if they have questions. Like I'll, I'll do my best to to do that. Um, nowadays, I'm way more open to it because I I want other people to be successful. Like people are constantly asking me questions about cameras, and in reality, there's so many resources out there to figure this stuff out. But there's just small things like. Uh, if you want to use a webcam or sorry, a DSLR as your webcam, you have to make sure that that camera doesn't have data output in the HDMI. So then you don't see like that the video is recording or that you have your ISO and all of your camera settings. So right. there's little stuff like that, that I'm able to help people with that is really simple and straightforward. That's not complicated. Um, but in most cases, I would say that sharing information about how to stream and that about the things that, um, make stream easier. Uh, for other people that are in, you know, in the entry level is more beneficial than holding something for yourself to try to hold it to help you grow. hundred percent. Right? Be because the, the timeline that you're looking at, you're, you're looking at it in, in a way that, you know, that you're like, oh, you know, I, I just built this thing and no one's going to be able to figure it out, but someone's smart enough to figure it out and they're going to figure it out. And if they really want to, they can, they can take it from you. So in reality, you know, if you're not the person that's the, you know, the fingerhead, I don't know if that figurehead, figurehead, that's what fingerhead, fingerhead, like me. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbhead. Yeah. Thumb face. So, uh, as soon as like, if you're the person that's delivering that information for people, you'll gain more, uh, building the identity and value for your personal brand, being the person that's supplying that information to, to people, you'll grow faster being that person than you will being the person that has that tool. I, um, shit, what was I going to say? Fuck. Was it about... Oh, yeah, I do love you. <laughs> it's hey. such a, that the gatekeeping of the knowledge is such like a short-term win thing. Yeah, it is. Where it's... the long-term is just being kind and just being yeah. plentiful with your knowledge. Um, I always, always, always tell people. If you need somebody to talk to because you had a bad day or you need some advice about your girlfriend or what the fuck ever, I can't help you. I suck. Yeah. I suck at that. Yeah. I'm terrible. Yeah. You have a question yeah. about OBS? Call me. Yeah, 3 a.m. Yeah. I'm up. Yeah. Let's fucking do this. Let's team yeah. viewer. I want to remote into your PC. We're going to fix this right now. I'm. Yeah. There's probably, I know of a couple people that I've done hours worth of audio like audio calls so just trying to help them out but at the end of the day it's like we help somebody out today and it fucking yeah. feels great yeah hey, you know what and, and it is what it is you know if uh like i get requests all the time for technical stuff because i am able to do it. i have the capabilities to do it and you know it, it's either going to take the other person spending their time and wasting their time you know trying to figure out how to stream and then eventually they get off put and you know, I don't want to be the guy that you come to for Q&A whenever you need you need help, but I'm always going to be that person that's willing to support someone in my community to help them, right? And I'm always going to be the person as well, like I've, I've done this a lot for people to, to be the person that like comes into their stream. You know, I, I had a few friends that, you know, have been streaming for years and they're like, hey, what can I do different? Like, what am I doing different? Like, what, what am I doing wrong? Like, I'm not seeing growth and this and that. And I've been that person that's just like, hey, listen, stop looking at that shit. Just if you, yeah. the thing about Twitch that if, if, if you're listening to this podcast or watching it, whatever, it, the only thing that you should take away from this, if you're listening to my rambling is if you're doing Twitch, 
the main reason you should be streaming is because you want to share what you already enjoy doing with, with other people. If you're in it for the financial reasons, you will lose your ass. It is, it's hardly uh, profitable. It is very, very hard to in, uh, earn a living. And if your focus is on growing and all this other stuff, it's, there's no, the end game never comes. Like you're, you're, you get maybe what, like a 0.00001% of people that stream become millionaires. So yeah. if you're enjoying doing it, if you have a nine to five job that sucks, but you can spend three hours at the end of the day making a, you know, a hundred bucks in a month, but you're doing something that you would, you would have been playing games anyways. Why not do it? It's right. fun. It's, if it's enjoyable for you, do it. It's it's a hobby. It's something that's fun. Don't get into it because you think it's a career. If you enjoy doing what you're doing, your viewership will notice that and they will reciprocate it by rewarding you with, you know, spending their time. They're giving you your their time and they're representing, you know, they're themselves killing themselves you with yeah, you. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But if if you're going to do if you're going to get into streaming, do it for the right reasons, because at the end of the day, um, it's it's really not worth it. But if you have a great time sharing your experiences with other people and you grow and you learn things because of it and you, you know, you're able to expand the amount of technical knowledge and streaming and broadcasting and, you know, and, and maybe even CSS, if you want to learn how to code your own uh, alerts and things like that, you know, you're going to network, you're going to meet all these people that, you know, in, in 10 years from now, you, you might get a job from them on LinkedIn. You, know? you, you never fucking know. You never know. So yeah, I mean, enjoy it. If if you're if you're killing yourself every time you start the stream because you hate doing it, like, what's the point? It's that attitude is never going to bring you to the top. So right. The best way to do it is just to find something you enjoy doing. I've been doing this a lot more. Like, I'll be playing WoW. WoW is the worst game for me to stream because it's super complicated and it's so hard for people to understand what's happening. But I'm like, fuck it. That's what I want to do. I'm just going to do it. And like, if I enjoy, like, people want to spend some time and they want to send me a message or two, like. Hell yeah. Like, I appreciate that because what I would be doing without Twitch, I would be sitting and playing a game. So right. It's just an extra layer uh, to that for me to, you know, have some other reason to, uh, you know, be spending my time playing that game. Anytime people come to me and say like, man, I've been streaming for a while. I'm not really, you know, seeing any growth. I don't really know what's going on. I'm like, how long have you been streaming? They're like, oh, you're, you know, like a year, a year and a half. I'm like, cool. Let's talk again in four. Yeah. And, and, and let's see, let's see where we're at, because nowadays you really got to play the long game and you have to love it if you're going to make something out of it, unless yeah. you are the point zero 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 one percent who is beyond charismatic like yourself, an amazing gamer or, you know, w one of those categories. So just got to put in the time, get the fuck to work. Yeah, Sweet. do it. Do it because you enjoy it. Like the the best way to do the math in your head. Super simple. I'm not I'm not even that proficient in math. I was okay at geometry, but if you have a nine to five job and it's paying you ten dollars an hour and you can stream for three hours, don't quit your fucking nine to five. You know what I mean? If if streaming eventually becomes a thing for you, then instead of an eight hour you know day of working, do a six hour day. See if you can cut your hours down and then spend that extra two hours two hours streaming if it becomes profitable enough. Don't throw all your eggs in the basket just to start. That streaming. would be fucking because I'm one of the people who say that I don't think I ever want to be a full time content creator. Like I would yeah. still part time job at, at least 30 hours a yeah. week, something yeah. to cover my bases. If I could work six hours a day, five hours a week and then just keep my same streaming schedule yeah. where I'm streaming four yeah. four hours, like four times a week. That would be like the perfect sweet spot. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, at my best, like. I made like what three, four hundred bucks a month, right? That covers my internet. That covers all my, you know. And I was streaming like quite a bit when I was playing Fortnite. But you know, three, four hundred bucks a month. I wasn't ever like I was ten, fifteen viewers. But at the end of the day, like I, I got to a point where that's covering my internet cost. It's definitely not worth it hourly. Fuck no. I might as well be doing anything else. McDonald's. Anything else. But I'm, I'm genuinely enjoying my time and it's paying for itself to a certain extent, maybe not for all the equipment, but it was stuff that I already had. It was stuff that, you know, made sense. And it, let's, let's say you're making 200 bucks a month on, on Twitch or a hundred dollars, um, which if you're making a hundred bucks on Twitch, if you're, if you're doing, making anything on Twitch, you're successful. That should be a metric for success, success for you. But if you're at a point where you're making anything, then it, sure to put that money aside and save it and buy, you know, a new mixer a couple months. 
as long as you're enjoying doing what you're doing, that should be the the motivation behind you know, yep. going and streaming in general. All right, All next right. question. Well, yeah, we got to blast through these questions. Okay, it, I'll go faster. Quick segue. You're an amazing yeah. guest. Thank you for being on here. It's an awesome time. Dude, I, I'm having such a great time. I'm like, okay, wait, hold on. Last time it was four, three weeks. Can I get, if I schedule now? <laughs> <laughs> How much longer? What's the next yeah. show I can be on? When is the next one I can be on? But I, <laughs> listen, I, I've never been so excited to be on something. I, I appreciate you. It, honestly, if you know, or if you talk to any of my uh people that are part of my community on Twitch, they're probably like, where the fuck has Bishop been? Where has he been? What's he been doing? Putting in the I've work. So, oh my God, it's been a nightmare of just stupid things after stupid things happening with work. But, you know, time and I place, man. Been, oh, it's, uh, I get, yeah, it's been a, it's been a, a mess. So personally, I'm just like, this is the first thing on Twitch that I've been uh, passionate about doing in months. So thank you for that. Hey man, you're welcome. I'm glad I could share this yeah. with you. It's it's been it, I've been having a ton of fun, man. It's Good. Been awesome. I'm fucking hard. Oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, next question is from Obawi. In five Ooh. words or l no, I'm sorry, I missed one. Gigantic oh, Gen. Oh. What would be the ultimate company to work for? Uh, like the end all be all job. Oh, fuck. That's a great question. Um, I think I would genuinely enjoy in the short term, I would genuinely genuinely enjoy working for an esports organization because I think that there's a ton of potential just with ad placement and creating compelling uh, content for viewers that can really engage people instead of like, you'll see like Intel or whoever it is, not going to, you know, any brand come in and they'll be like, oh, esports, there's a ton of viewers here. How do we get our money in there if we put our logo on this? And that's just kind of how they go about things. But there's a ton of potential with just like interactive content for viewers that, that, produces like there's tons of technology out there that can that can lead to this but there's so much uh potential just for working closely with brands and the stuff that i've done in the past so working with an esports org would be awesome just because like you look at these you know the big the big uh esports you know organizations and you look at what they're doing just on twitch and with you know what they're uh supplying to their partners they're getting a png that loops for like hundreds of thousands of dollars and then they're putting a logo on a jersey it's insane to me there's a lot so of money I, there yeah there's there's a lot of money so I, I think when it comes down to in the short term that's what i'd really be interested in doing uh in the long term the the company that i've 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 freelanced for a ton i've worked for uh quite a bit in the past um is red bull red bull for me like coming up as a, as a kid in action sports and stuff like that they have been at the cutting edge in history for doing all of like supporting athletes supporting you know, all these big uh, events that are happening, whether it be Stratos and sending someone to the moon when the U.S. hasn't sent some, or not to the moon, sorry, to the, to the, to the to space. space. When, yeah. When NASA can't even do it, uh, it's, you know, they're just, they're financing things that are super cool. So like for me, the end goal is working for a company that values uh, the things that they do with their uh, earnings instead of uh, how much money they're making at the end of the day. So that's the, that's the fastest way I can answer that. Okay. Um, I, I would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do it, baby. I, I can't. I don't think I can say that. I would like. I don't think there's a dream job where I'm working for somebody else, unless I have free, like full creative freedom, and also freedom. Like I can't talk how I'm talking now at my day job. Right. Like I can let, I can let off no. a couple F bombs here and there, but I can't talk about getting that yeah. ass sucked. Right. Like <laughs> there's certain things I can't say. Um, yeah, I would yeah. say just like I was mentioning before, my dream situation is yeah. to have a kind of regular day job where I'm still working in technology. Cause I really love the job that I have right now, 30 hours a week where I was doing that. And then the other half split in between podcasting, video games and creative streams have you ever seen yeah. the uh kind of funny twitch channel no i haven't so it's like a very high production like talk show and they do all sorts of content um but they have like a or they used to have the show that i used to watch the guy um colin moriarty the guy that i really liked is no longer with kind of funny but they had like a morning show where they would just do like a kind of like news anchory segment yeah. talk show yeah. and I would love to be a part of something like that. But then again, those people weren't working for themselves because that guy made one joke 
on National Woman Day or Women's Day, National Female Day. What? Uh, national. There's a national day for everything. That's just. I can't remember. There was like, but there was like a definitive holiday. Okay. Okay. That he so I he made a tweet that was uh like um is it a day? Maybe he made it's not a noopsies. He made, he made a, a noopsies. noopsies. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember yeah. the exact holiday, but the day or at least the hashtag for that day was a day without yeah. a woman. It was like the day that we're supposed to appreciate women. And oh, his okay. his yeah. tweet was hashtag a day without a woman. Uh, a woman and then um ah silence <laughs> and he lost his fucking job over what? that tweet so he wasn't working for himself um but i've always i've always loved the idea of having like a super super high production kind of like talk show yeah. um yeah. kind of thing um but i'm i mean in my opinion i'm doing what i love with talk shows right now like just being able to sit down have a couple drinks and and just talk with people um, nah, and then, it's fun, you know, it's, it is. it's different. I think, I think, uh, you know, in general with, with Twitch, if, you know, if I can segue just for a second, there's a massive, massive, massive opportunity for people to come onto Twitch and do something other than playing Fortnite. Yes. There's a huge, for, there's a huge potential for it. Everything that you see, if you want to be successful on Twitch, here's, here's, you know, what I I'd said earlier today that. Uh, if you hear someone say that they have the uh, route to success on Twitch, they're full of shit. But here's here's one for you. If you want to become successful on Twitch, go on YouTube, find any idea anyone else is doing on YouTube for a show and find a way to translate it to, to a live stream because it's a lot more complicated than it sounds. But if you're into nature, go and find a way to live stream a nature show. If you're into cooking, find a way to stream cooking. If you're into painting, find a way to produce a, a, a painting stream that's interesting. But then... Find the, the most interesting thing about Twitch is that we're able to layer in interactivity so then people can be a part of what the production is. On YouTube, any other platform that you're looking at where it's based on VODs, you don't have the opportunity to respond immediately or be a part of that content. Right. So don't come and don't come and play Fortnite and expect to become the next ninja. It's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna tell you right now, you can tweet at me and say, screw you because you're ruining my dreams, but it's not gonna happen. Times Square has been do, done. Yeah, it's been done. You, everyone's flossed. It's <laughs> I won't. Nobody flossed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's been done. So find something that you're genuinely passionate about that you could make a video about. Go find someone on YouTube that's making content that is about something you're passionate about, and then find a way to turn that into a live stream. It sounds like it, you're ripping it off. You're ripping someone else's content off, but. They ripped it, it is, off before, it, so <laughs> it's been ripped off before. They already ripped it off. So find a way to translate it into live broadcasting and live streaming, and find a way to make it sustainable that you can do it once a week or once a day or once a month, and do it because that's that. There's a huge space for that on Twitch, and you will be partnered in ten minutes if if Twitch sees you doing something that's different. I think the person that I found on Twitch that that isn't doing something incredibly different because he is still playing games. Uh, but he's finding a way to do something that uh, is, you know, is incorporating an extra layer on top of that. The the game is just a catalyst is this guy named Rudism. I don't know if you've seen him, mm -hmm. but but he makes he codes different uh, controllers and stuff. So he plays like a shooter game on a on a racing wheel or on a da dance pad or plays potatoes. Mario. Yeah, it, it's so cool because it's like a dynamic of the game that he's just engineering stuff, but he's playing games with these engineered like MacGyver, you know, pieces of equipment. And it's super compelling. Like if I've streamed, uh, like I was thinking about it earlier, I was like, "Ooh, compelling!" Oh, uh, yeah. It's I haven't heard that word in a w in a while. That's a good really? word. Yeah. Shit, you should have told me before this thing because I could have just said it a bunch. Uh, no, it's good. Just the one and doneer. I like it. One and doneer. Okay, I like it. But the 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 fact is, like, I'm not going to become the next Pengu on playing Rainbow Six. I'm not going to become the next Canadian. Like, I could sit and play in Siege all day long, and I could probably become like a 50 viewer Nancy or 100 viewers, and maybe 1,000 viewers, maybe 10 viewers. Who knows, right? But what would be really interesting to me is if I found a way to use Siege, a game that I'm passionate about, to then produce another layer on top of that, uh, to use the game just as a catalyst to produce the content. That's what this is all about. It's not about playing the game. It's about using games as a uh, basis to then produce a higher level of content. Yep. Yep. So I love yep. what you're doing on Twitch, by the way. You're doing a fantastic job. If if I'm gonna be your stream coach, I'm gonna be your stream coach. Oh stream baby, coach. let's go. What's your fee? Blowjobs? How uh, many blowjobs? Uh, like one hundred 
billion. Look, I suck good dick, Bishop. I'll change your life. <laughs> I'll change your life, brother. <laughs> All right. Next question from Obawi. In five words yeah. or less, what is the meaning of life? Mm. Eat, sleep, sex, games, pizza. Get that ass suck, brother. <laughs> if I if I really had to sum it up into five words, um, oh man, five words. Do what you can't do. Do what you can't. That's five. Be yourself. Fuck. That's be yourself. Unapologetically. Be yourself. Okay, dude. Y'all <laughs> you hear? You hear? Yeah, yeah. How about get that ass sucked, homie? Let's go with that one. Yeet! Yeah, yeah. Next question. Sucked, uh, Zandy Chan, would you recommend buying an overlay or making one yourself? Ooh, this is uh, this is a question that's bad for business. I can't, uh, <laughs> I, hashtag so not sponsored by Bishop yeah, GP. Hashtag, Does not uh, do this kind of thing. Buy, buy my overlays. I'm going to be putting them on Twitter. I'm going to be putting them on Bishop. At Bishop was here. I'm going to be uh, creating them and selling them on Twitter. So buy those. Now, honestly, um, I have, uh, because of my own experience, if you come to my stream, you'll notice that I have, you know, arguably some of the best stuff that you can buy for streaming. Right. Whether it be lights, cameras, whatever it is. Right. Can't computers, you know, whatever it is. Not not a humble brag, but. It nothing helps you grow on Twitch. There's there's nothing that's going to help you grow on Twitch other than yourself and being the best person you can be for the people that are watching. And it takes time. D don't like a lot of people wait in, in uh, like, it, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people out there that want to buy overlays that want to buy transitions and all this other stuff. And I go to their channel and I'm looking at you know, what they're doing. And I'm really honestly, personally in the past, because I've, I've done everything like a la carte or, you know, one-off stuff. I really select who I've worked with in the past. And there's a lot of people that want me to help them with their channels. Uh, either I don't have any time to do it, or there's certain people that I'm just kind of like, I skip over here and there because I don't think they need my help. And I think that if they spend money on the stuff that I'm doing, sometimes it feels like it's it's not going to help them get to where they want to go. So they're ultimately just burning money doing that and in, in, in going through the process to do that. So it, the kind of the moral of the story is it doesn't the the overlays in general, if you can create yourself something that can properly represent something that you're able to make yourself. That's the most valuable thing I think for Twitch in general and like in for your viewership. So I have a buddy, American Dad, who does this really, really well. His stream, the graphics and all that are are terrible, but they're like in a way, you know, in Randy or uh, Randall or a Blitz Express for people that don't that that know him from before. All of the things that he includes in his stream, like I drew him some shitty picture that was like uh, this guy doing a heel click that now Casey's done and upgraded and done a second version of. But it was this crappy little picture and he used it as his image because I said it was him. It was just this ugly, ugly thing. And people love that kind of stuff. They love the things that are ge uh, genuinely you, right? Don't like you, you can never hire someone to create something that is genuinely you, right? Mm -hmm. So like. You can never hire uh, a designer, a, a whatever, to produce exactly what you want. You can, if, if you're small or if you're growing or you're trying to grow on Twitch, make your first run. I, if you go back in my VODs and my save stuff all the way back and see what I made at the beginning, it is terrible. It's god awful. But like my buddy Dover, who's been in my stream since day one, he's like, oh, I know about that overlay. Like, remember the old banana that used to hang on the edge of your circle uh, camera frame? So the, the best way to put it is do the best with what you can in the interim. See if you can start to uh, you know gain some traction on Twitch and see what you're doing wrong. Watch your VO, your vods and figure out you know what's uh, you know what you're doing wrong personally, like just from you know your your own interaction or what you're you know the things that you can improve on personally. And then the graphics come. Like if you want to make your own stuff, do it right away. See what you like. Change it over time. There's nothing is set in stone. If you want something that's really, really nice, you can hire me to do it. But at the end of the day, it's not going to give you that return that you you think it's going to. It's up to you to utilize those tools that people like me can build you to utilize them the best way. So then more and more people can are going to see them because it, it, I could make you the best production, the best overlays, the best transitions. I could I could make 3D renderings up my ass of literally anything you want. But at the end of the day, if no one's going to see it because 
you're leveraging that stuff that kind of goes back to that guy we were talking about with the, you know, different technology. If you're leveraging that to help you grow, it's not going to work. And it's up to you as the streamer to do the best with what you can create, because you might find out like my buddy Grant, who's in chat, it's, uh, it's KTA. He asked me and he asked uh, a few buddies of mine to do overlays back in, uh, back in the day, like years ago. He did, wasn't designing anything himself, but all of a sudden, because he had the need to design and the need for these overlays and stuff that he couldn't request from other people, he started doing it himself and now he's designing himself. So he found in himself a, a trait that he didn't know about because he took the time and uh, he spent it doing something uh, with, with a, a, a goal in sight. So, and that's the best way to learn at the end of the day. People ask me how I learned how to do all the stuff that I, that I do myself, like design or editing or you know, creating content. It's all been a, uh, I see something in the, in the future and I just figure out how to get there. And I just kind of pave the path as I'm going. So at the end of the day, if you can teach yourself how to design something in Photoshop, you've just taught yourself something and your reward is you have this overlay that's genuinely you. So if you've been streaming for two years or less, you don't need to worry about buying overlays, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. there, go to nerdordie.com. You can download every overlay that will make your panels, your alerts, everything match for yeah. free. Or for like ten dollars, um, I have designed all of my overlays since I've started streaming, and they're all fucking terrible. <laughs> like, it's just it's not where I want it to be. But my money and my time is best spent elsewhere. If people yeah, get yeah. way too caught up in the aesthetics of how a channel looks. If you were to give ten people, if you were to select ten people and have them go into ten streams. Nobody is going to go into your stream and go, man, this guy's Twitch panel, this is info panel. It's disgusting. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. There's going to be seven other things that are going to make them leave before your overlays. If your overlays suck, but your content is fantastic, they'll stick around. Yeah. Case, in, case in point, I streamed without a compressor for a really <laughs> long time and with very, very shitty graphics. So... If you, and the thing is, is like you could stream for a year and then you could have somebody come along and go, Hey, I want to design your overlays and they could pump out something for free and then just give it to you. And then you got yourself yeah. awesome overlays. Yeah. I mean, um, I'm a perfect example of that. If you look at my panels right now, they're, they match nothing in my content at all. They're just these shitty Photoshop kind of designed things that, that are garbage. My transition, I make better transitions for other people than I make for myself. All of my channel stuff sucks. Like, <laughs> I mean, my, from my perspective, I'm like, God, my stuff sucks. It's so hard to make your own stuff. That's yeah. Of it. it's, it's, as a designer, I, I find it super, super hard to make stuff for myself. But for other people, I'm like, oh, that's easy. Like, this, this is what you need. So, I mean, it, it it's bad for business for me to say, you know, not to buy an overlay. I'm going to be selling them on my Twitter, like I said. Right. You can buy them, but... If you're going to spend the money and I'll, I'll be genuine with you. If you ask me personally, like, Hey, what do you think? I'll tell you what I think, but don't buy one. And if you do not, if you're not ready, you know what I mean? Like save your money, do things that, you know, that, you know, you might not be ready yet. There's certain people that have been streaming for a long time that need that extra step. And I, I'm not going to talk them out of it. Um, and there's a lot of great things that I can add on top of a stream to make the production better. But you know, it, what it comes down to is, you know, finding the things that you genuinely need, finding things that interact well with, you know, what you're producing. And then uh, when it comes to overlays and stuff like that, I mean, the the step one is just, you know, making something yourself. And if someone's like, God, that looks like actual dog shit. You're like, yep. hey, that's because I made it. I don't yeah. know what I'm doing. People will love it. They'll think it's hilarious. So, um, yeah, that, I mean, that's the best way to put it out there is, you know, start with what you can make yourself. And if it's if if it's terrible and you hate it, um, do it again, my, do it again. And if, if you really, really need help and you're, you know, it's not a, it's not a burden on you and you're not taking money out of your, your, uh, what do you the tax refund to, to pay me? I, I'm, uh, my problem is that I've, I've done everything a la carte and for hourly, I've been charging like a, a millionth of what my rate is just to do stuff for my friends and stuff. But now what I'm doing is, um, because my background's all in like coding and, and producing content, I'm building fully interactive, uh, um, templated overlays. So then I'm doing one with a hundred different options. So everyone can have one that's individual and I'm going to sell oh. them for like 20 bucks instead of, you know, 
having to charge people up that. Cause if I was charging hourly at what I should like, what I would typically charge a company for the same amount of time, it would be like a $500 job. Right. So it doesn't did make we, any sense. Did we ever talk about me wanting you to think about doing the Crocs and Hot Pockets overlay design? Did we ever talk about that? I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Do you want me to do it? If, if you if you want to like talk you out of a job, if you want to <laughs> risk our friendship for some business and maybe think about some things, let me know. All right, if you want to play Apex with me anytime soon, just like oh, how about Fortnite? You want to play some Fortnite? Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, that's how we really ruined the friendship. We right. Fortnite, yeah. oh. All right, next question. We really got to bust through these. Uh, yeah, yeah, Bearded yeah, Corvus asks, "How do you get your eyebrows looking so good?" Um. They are painted on with spray paint and a stencil. Casey does it every morning. I oh. actually, uh, I was born with a complex that doesn't let me grow eyebrows. So it's just spray paint. They look beautiful. Thanks. You know what? You could, you could take, you could probably swap one half of your mustache and your eyebrows and they would look just as good. Like that's how, that's how good your mustache looks too. <laughs> and you've got the nice uh, separation in the middle. You could, I need somebody <laughs> to Photoshop his eyebrows on his mustache and his mustache on it for his eyebrows. Split them up, make it. Yeah. Can you give us one solid freeze frame so somebody can screen cap this and Photoshop it? Come on. I'm looking at you chat. Somebody get that. All right. <laughs> Next question comes from Gigantic Jen. How do you deal with hurt feelings if you play with one but not the other? You talking about my nuts? You talking about <laughs> testicles, right? <laughs> How do you deal uh, with hurt feelings if you play with one and not the other? If you play with one and not the other, or maybe is he talking about like what? What I imagine he's saying is if if uh, he wants to play Fortnite with me and not with Casey. Or vice versa. If he wants to play Fortnite with Casey and not with me, how does he do that without hurting the feelings of the second person? Um, just ask him. I don't give a <laughs> half a shit. I was yeah. I was about to say if you just communicate. Yeah. Like there's yeah. there's been times where um, I've I've played a certain game with yeah. somebody before, and then I started playing the certain game again. But like maybe like we got a little bit distant and like another person has kind of made their way yeah, into yeah. the group and I I'll send a message to somebody be like, hey, just letting you know, like, I know we used to play this game all the time, um, but I'm playing it again and I kind of already have a full party. But I just want to yeah. let you know that I was thinking about you, but I'm just like, I'm just I'm just playing with some other people. And most yeah. of the time that goes over well, for some reason, every person I've ever said that to doesn't talk to me anymore. More. <laughs> yeah. So maybe that, <laughs> no, but maybe it's, it's a different strategy. Yeah. Communication, no, I, dude. Communication. I, yeah, yeah. I honestly, I, I, I get it. I, I've, I've been in some awkward situations too. With, you know, like you'll have a buddy that you play games with all the time, and then all of a sudden you play with someone else for like a couple of days, and you come back, and you're like, hey, bud, how's it going? And then he's like off on a competitive team, and you're like, wait, you don't want to play with? Uh, me oh anymore? shit. So, and I, I mean, I think it just comes down to communicating. I mean, a lot of the time. You know, gaming is something that should be fun for us, right? And I, I understand fully because I, I get this a lot just because like when I play games with certain people, so I, I there's two parts of me. Either I have a ton of fun and I'm a goofball or I'm a try hard and I'm like, fuck, shit. Yeah. Just, fuck. So there's, <laughs> there's only two parts. There's It's completely separate. Um, there's nowhere in between. So I, it, it's like, I, I get it where a lot of people in, want to play games with me because they enjoy you know, the way that I act when I'm streaming or they enjoy playing games with me or whatever it is. But, um, you know, I, I understand for, for other people that like their basis of having fun in a, in a game sometimes relies on me or someone else to, to have fun in a game, like playing CSGO. If I played CSGO with my buddies that are competitive, I'm not going to have fun. But if I play with my, like say, you know, if Knackers is, it's a lot of fun to play with him. So let's go, let me ask him to play a bunch. But it's kind of like the dynamic. I, I understand people rely on other people for the different emotions and the different kind of personalities that they're right. able to deliver to the gameplay. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the time, like if the question is geared towards like uh, in, like Casey and I being in a relationship and if you want to play with Casey or you want to play with me, honestly, there's a lot of times Casey will bring it up and she's like, hey, just go play games with your friends. And I'll be like, fuck no, I want to play games with you. Fuck them. Like it, yeah. it happens a lot. But then there's sometimes where I'm like, hey, you know, I'm going to go and do that. Like, it, and we'll be like hanging out uh, and I'll be like, hey, you know, I want to play, you know, Siege tonight. And then we'll get around to the time and like, I'll change my mind. I'll be like, oh, I really want to play WoW now with Casey or I want to play this game with Casey. 
And she's like, oh, well, I thought you were going to play with the other person. And and she like pushes me to go and do other things because she's probably like, God, I'm so tired of this person <laughs> living with me and you won't leave me alone. So, um, yeah, I think just communicate. Just be like, hey, uh, can we play, you know, like if, especially if you're a streamer. I know Jen says, I don't know if the question is, you know, geared around that. But if you're a streamer and you want to stream with like co-stream with someone else, like if let's say, for instance, just to keep this simple, if I wanted to stream with Weenie and I don't want to play with Knackers, I would just be like, hey. Weenie, uh, I would, I'd probably message maybe the both of you guys and be like, hey, um, would it be cool if you know I played with Weenie? Uh, maybe, I don't know if I would do that. That's it's that just, even seems weirder. About it, right? <laughs> like, make it weirder. So maybe I'll just be like, hey, Weenie, um, do you want to play? You know, Siege on Friday night. I have you know three other people that I'm also playing with. Here's who they are. You know, would you like to join us? Because I think if you make it clear that you know it's like, hey, you know, we I would just want to play with you and not you know, your significant other. I personally, I'll be like, sit, like go for it. Right. And the time, yeah. that wouldn't like, that wouldn't phase me at all. Like if somebody hit yeah. up Weenie and said, yo, I want a dual stream with you. I'd be like, yeah. fucking go for it. You're like, who yeah, am I? Be like, it, no, please. no, you're, no, you're mine, <laughs> mine only like, <laughs> and, and at the same point, there's people who hang out in Weenie stream and, but don't hang out in mine. And you can't let that get to you either. Cause not yeah, everybody yeah. is going to like everybody. Not yeah. everybody can get along. Um, it, it's so circumstantial and it all depends yeah. on like your confidence level with your significant other too. Like yeah, that plays yeah, a yeah. huge part in it. Yeah. Um, Jen, if you're listening to this at a future date, hit us up, tag both of us on Twitter and, Explain what you actually meant. Cause I, I wasn't sure if this, I'm pretty sure this is when we were talking about like couples and streaming yeah, and yeah. stuff and streaming together. Yeah. Um, but like most of the, yeah, if, I don't really know of anybody. Like if somebody came up and was like, Hey, you know, I want to, I want to play games with you, but I, I don't want to play with your girlfriend. I'd be like, well then you can suck my dick. Cause like that's my life partner. It, that's just how it's going to go. So it's, it's, it's whatever, but I think it's definitely uh circumstantial. Uh, okay, next question from Paul. What are your top two favorite moments streaming on Twitch? Hmm. Ooh, what a good question. Um, this is easily one of them, if you don't mind me saying. Stop Today's it. Stream, no, Stop! easily. I, you know, it, it's been good to talk to someone that has a lot of uh, similarities and not to just hit on you. Uh, but, you know, we have a lot of similarities on Twitch and just you're you're coming from a different angle than I am, but uh you know we're both going for the same goal and i think it's cool to kind of see the different routes that the people go and just being able to talk to someone in a platform where we're not relying on a game it, it's been really cool so this this is one of them i think uh another one would probably be uh there was a, a Fortnite event called thanos and i was really really afraid of thanos during this stupid fucking thing it was so stupid i'm an idiot but uh, basically Thanos, that one character, one player in the BR would get fit Thanos. Then they have all of his abilities and they can just crap on the rest of them. So everyone had to fight against them. And I played like 10, 15 rounds of it, right? It was super. And, and at this time I was like really good at the game. So I, I was expected by chat to perform really well. And this is actually, it's a funny story because this is one of the first times Casey ever watched me on stream before we were dating or even talking. And, uh, I, I believe, I believe. It was definitely before we were dating. I don't know if it was before we were talking. I'm sorry, Casey. Don't bully me. But uh, oh, my timelines. <laughs> it, it was like there's like six people or six people left in the game and Thanos. And I went up to the top of the mountain and I started shooting. I was like, pow, pow. and I'm killing him, killing him. It finally kill him. And I'm like, fuck yes, I finally did it after like so many games of trying. Jump up, slide down this mountain, and I land at the bottom, right where Thanos' glove is, right there, glowing, glistening, and I died. Oh my killing, god. I killed myself going for that. So I thought that that was uh I thought that that was a really funny moment. There's <laughs> there's there's so many more that um that have happened. Honestly, streaming has been such a positive influence I think in my life. I I've, I've kind of lost it recently and kind of lost my consistency with streaming, but in most cases there, you know, even you know, even when stuff is super negative in life or things that, you know, aren't, you know, aren't perfect or you're dealing with negative things and, you know, just in your day to day, just being able to, you know, booting upstream is a really hard thing to do a lot of the time. And oh yeah. I've, I've found that, you know, streaming for a time for me was like my shelter in a way. So I, I started my stream and I would have a great time doing it. And then that was like my positive thing for the day. And I felt really good about it. So I think that 
it wasn't like one or two things. It was like every day for, for, uh, some time that I was really, it was like the, the shining light in my day that I was like looking forward to. So I think that just in general coming into, you know, being able to go and start my stream up and have people come in and support me for, you know, months and months is it's compelling. It's compelling to use that word. (laughs) So, uh, we're going to make this long podcast longer because I actually I was just having a conversation uh, with my mommy uh, last week and she calls me like every week, um, like on the weekly, just kind of talk. And I was listening to a podcast and something that you've heard uh, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. Oh, I love him. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. If that man ever shows up in Detroit. I'm going oh, down him? on him. Oh my god! Oh, you love him. Oh, you love him. I okay. love him. So All I was right. listening to one of his podcasts, and um, somebody was asking him about like why, um, like why he does what he does, and kind of what content that he consumes, um, mm-hmm. on the daily. And he's like, I don't. He's like, the one constant I have as far as other content that I listen to is music. He's like, I don't watch TV. I don't watch movies. I don't yeah. consume other people's content, and somebody pressed him on it and he goes, many people use things like video games, television, cars, TV shows, movies. They use it as an escape. It's, it's, it is, they use it to escape real life to distract them from what's going on in the real life. And he said, my life is so great. I've built such a great life for myself that I never feel like I need to escape from it or distract myself from it. And I thought to myself, that is exactly how I feel is like every day is like a good day. And obviously there's so many things that somebody yeah, can yeah, complain yeah. about and everybody yeah. has terrible things that happen all the time. But yeah. that's, that's how I feel is like, I never feel like I need a break. Like I obviously just took a break from streaming, but a lot of unrelated. You're lies, you're lies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, It was probably 20% burnout and 80% physical yeah. exhaustion yeah you, you just need yeah you need you need breaks but no i i understand it like once you get in a good loop of of streaming and and just in i and i mean at the end of the day like i haven't been streaming but twitch is still what i consider to be my platform like i i go into uh, like when i was super super active on twitch you know now that i have a girlfriend it's a little bit different but i would be watching everyone's streams that i would support i would try to do my best to be in stream so like literally all day i would watch so much twitch that it, you know, it was unreal, but what, what, what kind of, what kind of streams were you watching that are different than the ones you were watching now? Because you have a girlfriend. Oh, no. <laughs> you worded that terribly. No, 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 no. That's awesome. But ultimately when it comes down, like I would spend, I would spend like six or seven hours a day in, uh, in Amphi stream and just sit and like hang out in there and then, uh, you know, and switch over and just kind of like give people a, you know, a, it's someone to talk to a lot of like a lot of buddies that come in that, you know, aren't necessarily larger or whatever it is. I just go in and kind of like catch up with them. Um, but even like when I, you know, take, whenever I'm taking a hiatus from Twitch, it's not and I, my, what I see is my biggest negative is that I'm not very outward with communicating with people. Like I'll just disappear off Twitch and I won't say anything about it. And weenie was actually streaming the day that I came back and she was talking about, she's like, it's so weird that, you know, like, uh, someone that you you know and she wasn't talking about me but she was talking about other streamers she's like it's weird that twitch is this place that you know all you could be every day being committing to come in uh to someone's stream and then all of a sudden they're just gone and it happens a lot on twitch right it does so so it's weird to me because i know that like there's people in our chat right now like girl of crows dover uh that they would come in every single day and like that was their source of entertainment for the day you know or the night and it would be something that they you know, it's like soccer practice every Thursday night. You you know that that's going to happen. So I think that, it, you know, one of my shortcomings has been not being as vocal with what's happening or what's going on. But a lot of the time I'm still on Twitch. Like if you, if you DM me or whatever, like maybe, you know, I'm not fantastic at getting back to you, but if you run into me, you're, you're probably going to run into me in someone else's chat. Like right. I'm always on Twitch in, in, to, in some respect. Um, and now more so on Twitter because that's kind of like the, the kind of a way place, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, I find it as a place where I know, like I've met so many people that are in interesting industries. Like once you kind of dig in a little bit with these people that you're meeting, you find out that like one of my, uh, buddies, uni matrix, he's a developer on Hellblade. Right. So 
all of a sudden I he's been it. in my chat yeah, before uni, yeah uni matrix he's so <laughs> awesome yeah steven's a good guy so he he uh he plays wow quite a bit now but i uh i was working for this company that was working with microsoft uh at e3 last year and uh he was also working there because microsoft bought their uh, ninja studios or whatever the hell it's called so he was also there and i was like hey how's it going and it's just like you know it's just interesting because like there's all these people that are you know, involved in different industries, but they kind of tie something into Twitch um, that brings, you know, value to what they're doing on Twitch. And I think that that's, you know, that's super cool. So I'm always going to be here. Just <laughs> maybe not streaming. Just it's creeping. Just ah, just creeping and lurking, brother. Uh, my two favorite moments streaming on Twitch, I would say number one, as far as like sappy, my five year streaming anniversary which was back in April of last year was probably one of like the best streams ever. I cried for probably like an hour, hour and a half straight. <laughs> nah! Is that uh, when the cops showed up? <laughs> no, no, that was rocket league. Uh, yeah. So five year stream anniversary was probably, probably number one. Um, number two was the OBS fundraiser that we just did uh, like a month or so ago yeah. raised like twenty one hundred dollars in in six hours i absolutely mind-blowing yeah. truly showed me how awesome um both uh, this and the twitch community as a whole um you know can just band together and just and just make shit happen it was awesome i i i have one more answer yeah I have one more answer. i just i and it's like twitch is such a weird like i'm terrible with timelines and i'm i'm just the worst at time lines not limes time lemons but, um time lemons so the, one of the greatest events, I think, is Casey and I, when we, or Rebel Ruby, when we first met, we didn't tell anyone that we were dating. So, like, Gigantic Gent and, like, all of the, all of these other people that were kind of, like, in between each other, or our channels knew about uh, both of us, but didn't know that we were getting together on anything. We played a couple games here and there. But we didn't tell anyone, right? So we were disappearing, both of us, off to Twitch for, like, two or three days whenever we were on, like, a hiatus, because it worked out that where I was traveling for work, she was in between, um, so I would just fly in a connecting flight and stop in, in Portland. Right. So, uh, there was, we met at E3 for the first time. And then, um, there's a few other trips that we were like making stops and, and we, we were just disappearing at the same time. There's a few people that caught on. There's a few people that knew, I think Dover was one of them. Okay. But there was a few people that f figured it out. So we, there was like a week in time, uh, cause we were both working from home. So she just came and she stayed at my place for a week and it was like, we were planning on, we're like, how the hell are we going to tell people, right? Like, how are we going to tell people that this is happening? So we just started this stream and I had a secondary camera and uh, I was just streaming as normal and it was kind of awkward and weird. And all of a sudden I switched to another camera and it's Casey and she's like, hello, hello. And she's acting like she's having technical issues and I had a green screen behind her. And then all of a sudden I walked up and like pulled the green screen out and she was in my studio. So it's like, in which is all like this RGB, which you know, people could recognize that it was my place. So right. we, we like started laughing and joking. And right when I pulled the green screen out, the camera that was on her froze. So it fucked the whole reveal up completely. And then we were so embarrassed. And then we were just sitting in the chairs, kind of like laughing, trying to figure out what was happening. Oh, no. And, uh, people in chat were like, oh, my God, what's happening? What's <laughs> happening? And they were super excited. So I thought that was kind of cool because like I'm not. Like in, in general, I'm not really a person to share personal stuff on social media, just in general. Um, but that was like the one thing I was like, oh, I'm revealing that I have like a girlfriend all these. Yeah, like, I'm not a loser. <laughs> I'm not a loser, you guys. <laughs> Weenie and I actually kind of did that, too. Like we were talking for a good bit and people were starting to kind of get a hint that we were talking to each other. Yeah. And then just one day on Snapchat when we were fucking using Snapchat for only one good reason. We snapped a picture at a bar and threw it up on our story. And then all of a sudden, who's like, oh, Nick Weenie. Oh, <laughs> good times. That's amazing. Yeah, the uh, the reveal was, was botched, but I think people were excited about it. And then um, we kind of disappeared again because we it's just like work has been, for both of us, has just been the dumb, like this crazy hellhole of a loop-to-loop a -loop roller coaster. So we got, we we finally decided we were moving in together. We didn't really tell anyone about it, but um, I think that there was a few times we were like in the same call and people were kind of catching on to that. But once we moved in together, um, I don't know if you saw it, but we made like a little cinematic video. Oh, I saw it. I actually watched it again today. 
Did you? Is yeah, because I went to go. I went to go grab your Twitter URL to put in the in the command. I'm like, oh, this video, and then I watched it again. Yeah. So we were we were just like we, a lot of a lot of what happens because like we don't have to do anything, right? And that's kind of the interesting thing about a content creator is you don't have to share anything or do anything, but. It's like for us, because it's such a weird, for me, it's a weird prospect having other people be interested in what, in what I'm doing. It's really strange. So it's like, I'm like, it, it's just natural for me. It's like, oh, hey, okay, we moved in together. Great. Like we spent, like, this is a personal thing that's, you know, we spent a lot of thought process going in doing this. And then all of a sudden, uh, Casey and I are like, we're, we're living together and we're like, wait, how the fuck are we going to tell people? Right. And we're sitting there like, how are we going to do it? Are we going to do another reveal? Like what's going to happen? And then all of a sudden I was just like, why don't we just make a video about how we don't know what we're going to do and then just make a video about us making a video and then <laughs> make the video. So like have us just sitting. So it was funny because that what we made was just a simple little setup, but it took us two nights to do it because the first time was way too scripted and we're just like, oh, let's just sit here and, you know, talk shit and, and figure out what happens. So I think at the end of it, it, it turned out pretty funny and pretty good. It was just a Loved little stupid it. thing. It was, it was super cute. So I think in general, kind of going forward, moving forward, uh, I might take a little bit more time to kind of structure what I'm thinking for uh, about doing on Twitch because I, I want to, I'm uh, the way that I operate is I'm either a hundred percent committed or not at all. Like I, I, there's no percentage. So I can't just come on and, and do a half-assed job of streaming. It's just not my thing. So what I kind of want to take a little bit more time, figure out the things that I really enjoy doing and then just go full in on them and you know, make sure that it's something that I can do and sustain and then find ways that Casey and I can, you know, incorporate, you know, both of our communities in a way that it's interactive, but, um, you know, it's not intrusive in a way that like, you know, doesn't affect either one of our streams. So I think in general, we're going to look to do more stuff where it's cooperative and things together, but individually, like for me, I want to be doing streams that I can combine like these creative talents with data and find ways to incorporate, like, for instance, one thing that I want to do is this game called Motorsports Manager. Uh, similar to how Jimmy names all of the subs after XCOM people, I want to take Motorsports Manager is literally a top-down motorsports uh, game where you manage a team. And okay. I want to name every driver after a sub, right? Or just after someone that's in, in the channel. So by doing that, I can just ma turn it into a production over an entire season and just be talking about like what's happening in the race and do like, because I, I don't know if you've ever watched me when I'm streaming Fortnite or something and I, and I die. I'll just announce. I'll just start casting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so I'll just go into the, the casting voice. I'll be like, all right, into turn number one, we have driver Dover GP going into first corner in the second <laughs> gear. Looks like he's got a car coming on the inside. Is he going to be able to get here on the straightaway? <laughs> and just go into full caster mode for an entire race because it's it's there's no variable that I can control what happens in the race, which is cool. It just, right. it, it just happens. So it's kind of like the marble marbles games that you would see on stream um, where it's just like, People can be a part of it without having to do anything. But as a viewer, it's like, this is not crazy content, but it's like, oh, this is interesting. There's me. Hey, there I go. And I just fell off a cliff. So you're part <laughs> of it, but you're disconnected in a way. So yeah. I, I think that's, I'm, I'm trying to find more things that I can do like that, but not in a way that I'm forcing myself to play something I don't want to play because I'm not going to, I've gotten to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to do something I don't want to do because it's right. just, there's no point. It's not worth it. And um, just to give you a little perspective on that, that's kind of one of the sole reasons why we started dumping some money and time into the craft room. Because it was like yeah. something other than video games where not only can we both have a space to do this other hobby that we like, but like yeah. I can be streaming, doing keyboard builds, and then she can hang out there with me. And it can just be yeah. like, we're just sitting there hanging out. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then... And it that's that's the thing is like finding because gaming is one thing but I, I feel like building that value for the viewer in ways that are different and compelling yeah fuck i keep saying that word now i'm screwing it up but it just be wet. finding <laughs> just finding different ways that that I, we can introduce things that uh that make the the content of the broadcast more interesting for the viewer i i honestly i feel like the first thing that's most important with streaming in general is personality and just finding a way that you can emulate yourself and not be something, someone that you're not. Um, because at the end of the day, it's going to get exhausting having to put on a face every time you stream. I want to yep. make it as simple as possible, like maybe four times a week. It's literally me in my sweatpants just sitting and doing nothing but playing the game that I want to play, talking to chat, obviously. But I found that I get into these kind of loops of where 
literally I have to shower and do all this shit before I stream. So it's like, there's a lot of pressure and tension on me and it's yep. like, yeah, just, and I, I really just want to get into a place where I'm really comfortable with what I'm doing, but where I can also interact with people because I feel like I've been letting a lot of they, like, there's a meme in my channel that I don't read chat. And that's like, I embrace the meme because I really don't read chat. Yeah. But that's something that Casey does really well. Um, so I'm trying to find ways that we can kind of play off of that. And, um, you know, when we're, when we're working together and, uh, you know, kind of find a middle ground. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, last two questions. Why is oh Bish God, more questions. <laughs> such a bad Cav main? These are both quick ones. Okay. Speak quick. Bad Cav. Uh, bad Cav main because uh, I am a Doc main now and uh, Cav doesn't have a ACOG. There Not you go. ACOG, you soft. Come on. Um, and I don't play for the London Cavaliers, so I don't even know what this question is about. Uh, Last it's, question. Ca Cavin, uh, Cavin, uh, siege. Got Cavin it. Siege. Okay. <laughs> I was being facetious, bitch. Oh, Jesus it, Christ. The London Calvin oh. Cavaliers. Oh. Come on. God damn it. I'm Last question. Dirty hookah hose. Uh, headphones you guys use? Question mark. Got a rec for competitive headphones? Question mark. Uh, headphones we use. Yes, we're using headphones. I do have headphones. <laughs> I'm using a uh, Steel Series uh, wireless headset. It, okay. They just Google it. You'll find it. I don't know what I don't know exactly what it's called. I I called them Artix on my last stream, and then someone was like, "What the fuck, dude? I have those Artix, and those aren't them." Like, well, they they used to be called Arctic, and then they moved them to something else. I needed uh, you. I was bullied the other day, and you could have protected me. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I use the Bio Dynamics DT990 Pros, the 250 ohm model. And they are the mm. best headphones in the goddamn world. If only they made a wireless version, I'd jizz all over them. Mm, yep. All right. Uh, we got to get out of here. I know I saw one or two more questions that got posted in chat, but we've really got to go. This is officially the longest podcast that I've Woo! ever done. We did it, brother. We <laughs> yeah, did it. brother. Woo! <laughs> uh, but uh, before we get on out of here, Bishy, why don't you take uh, just one more moment and just tell chat what you're all about, what you have coming up, where they can find you on social media, and we will close this bitch down. Yeah, uh, Bishop GP here on Twitch. Uh, Bishop was here on Twitter. Someone else has Bishop GP. Damn it. The I fuck? know Knackers just got Knackers, N A A C K E R S. Bro, I waited years. Years. Actually, so that's a little, year and a half. Little, year and a half. Thank you. That's a, that's a big deal. So, yeah, I, uh, you can find me on Twitter and on uh, Twitch, Bishop GP on Twitch. Bishop was here on Twitter. I actually just read that on your bot. But um, I am a variety streamer, if you can call it that. I am a content producer. I do some really cool stuff sometimes, and I also make some dog shit other times, but I think it all plays well together. So I am planning on returning to streaming more actively pretty soon here. I'm always interested in streaming uh, and just the art of you know combining technology with personality. I think that's really fun. And uh, I am looking forward to do it more. My girlfriend, Casey, and I are planning on doing more streams together. You can find her at at rebel ruby on twitch i think there's an underscore at the end rebel ruby underscore on twitch and uh yeah just shout out to knackers and uh all of the people that support him thank you guys for hanging out tonight knackers you have truly blessed me with this opportunity it's been uh oh, it's stop been so it much fun. It's Did just I, a friendly I, conversation say, okay <laughs> uh, honestly this is why honestly like we we can't have a discord channel that we can both be in at the same time because this this would happen every this, single This month. is what happened. <laughs> yeah, three hours, our girlfriends would be in bed and be like, God damn it, they're fucking talking. About <laughs> I knew they both like dicks. Oh, God damn it. it. <laughs> Shit. So yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's the gist of it. Just being going to be on Twitch a little bit more. And uh, beyond that, also going to be, even though I talked to everyone out of buying them, uh, going to be offering uh, templated but custom Twitch overlay packages, starting with overlays and uh, going to have some modular design to them. So you can select your skins, if you want to call them that, to uh, each frame and uh, it's going to be cheap. So easily done. You don't have to buy them. You shouldn't buy them. But if you're ready for them and you feel ready, they're going to be there and uh, we're going to kill the game with those. So that should be fun. Look out for those on Twitter. Bishop, uh, at Bishop was here and that'll do it. Plus, yeah, if you if you're making an income from Twitch and you have money to spend, get yourself some overlays. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. If you're ready, you know. It, it, listen, here's the thing, Knackers. The way that I'm making it out is like, 
it's a mental game, right? Right. If they're not ready, if they're not ready, they can't have them, but they're going to want them more because they feel like they're ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See what I'm doing there? So yeah, if you're ready, don't do it if you're not ready. All right. If you don't, if you're feeling unready, uh, don't do it. But uh, in in all reality, um, if you need some help uh, and you need a guiding light in the content world, uh, yeah, reach out. I might, I might get back to you. I'll do my best to do so. Uh, and, uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you guys on Twitch streaming yourselves. And, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you sub to knackers. No, he's, he's producing a, a brilliant experience <laughs> and you guys are <laughs> suckling up the cheat of his work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh my God. All right. Uh, Bish today was fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for accepting the invite and being here on the show. It was a fantastic episode and I would love to have you back possibly in two years hey listen two years two (laughs) months two weeks Uh, anytime you need me i'll be here man i'll I'll answer immediately for any call of the the knack man so appreciate you for having me on and i appreciate everyone that's been hanging around through our shenanigans and look forward to the next time we get to either play some games or you know talk about stuff that we're probably not qualified to talk about. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds good to me. Uh, All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Crocs and Hot Pockets. I will be back with the normal crew, middle-aged stream and Salty Sam uh, next week for episode 88 of the Crocs and Hot Pockets podcast. Yeah, Jimbo! (laughs) Um, Thank you guys so much for chilling with us. It was an awesome podcast. I'm sorry it went late, but at the same time, I'm not sorry. Get fucked. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Goodbye. Say goodbye, damn it. Why doesn't anyone oh, ever say goodbye? God, damn it. What the hell? All right. <laughs> see ya.